Welcome to our analog mix signal poster presentation. My name is Charles Danchak, and I'll be talking about a UVM test bench to verify a common analog mix signal block. It's a low dropout or LDO voltage regulator. I'm based in Silicon Valley, have worked at companies ranging from Intel to Synopsys. Currently, I consult with Betasoft. I also teach System Verilog online through UCAL at San Diego. What's the goal of this test bench? It's to verify that the LDO produces a steady regulated output voltage even when its line input voltage jumps around or picks up noise or hum or sees a heavy load. Our test bench includes eight low-level directed tests, each verifying a specific LDO characteristic. For example, line regulation. The line regulation test applies min typical and max line inputs, then checks whether the output stays regulated to within a 5% design requirement. As an unstated goal, we wanted to keep this UVM test bench analog friendly, so analog designers could potentially write their own directed tests as if they were working at an actual lab bench top using Keithley instruments and scripts. One tactic that helped meet this goal we relied on UVM events as an intuitive way to synchronize test stimulus and response across the test bench components. Oh, to further stress the dot and hit on an anticipated corner cases, the test bench includes a higher level test suite. It randomly alternates between line transient and low transient tests, uh, both of which tend to generate voltage overshoot or undershoot spikes. Here's a sample transcript showing at least one failure. Slide 3 is a block diagram of our test bench organization. The rounded rectangles represent class objects such as this top level test which is specified on the UVM the simulator command line. The squared rectangles uh, uh, are modules. Uh, we were able to isolate the class hierarchy from low-level testing details, thus avoiding the need to constantly modify the environment every time a directed test got added or revised. One key isolation tactic was using the UVM factory. Uh, we used it to replace a generic base driver or base monitor with test-specific factory drivers and monitors. For further isolation, we encapsulated all analog instrumentation inside this fixture submodule, which also contains the DUT. We used X model from Scientific Analog to apply analog stimulus to the DUT and measure its analog voltage or current response. Notice how fixture communicates with the class objects over interface buses diff and MIF. These buses are hierarchical. The green line represents a digital signal group. The purple represents an analog group. Let's look at the DUT itself. Our regulator was designed at the CMOS transistor level as a virtuoso schematic. It has an op amp with a fast feedback loop that quickly stabilizes the output under input changes. We extracted a simulatable system Verilog model directly from this schematic using Scientific Analog's Model Zen utility. As this code excerpt shows, uh, this PMOS pass transistor was extracted as a PMOSFET library primitive whose parameters are fitted to a 45 nanometer process design kit. The resistor, the capacitor, are other examples of X model's many primitives and analog functions. What's the result? It's a ready-to-run, sign-off quality simulation model coded in pure system Verilog. The test bench uses an enumerated test type declared in package types. This test type enables drivers, monitors, and scoreboard to set the active test, as shown here, or to get the active test. Another key isolation tactic, slide six, 
each test-specific factory driver or monitor calls a test-specific command task. Here's a typical driver command task that applies stimulus to the dot for the line regulation test. Not shown, there's a corresponding monitor task to check the dot's response. Using commands like trigger event, uh, whose body is expanded here, uh, an analog designer could potentially write a detailed test without a lot of UVM expertise. Now let's look inside the fixture submodule. Uh, this shows the line regulation test. Uh, we can feed typical min or max DC voltage sources through an analog selector to the DUT input. Uh, the command tasks drive values like this select VDD code, uh, as well as the 50 ohm value for this switchable load resistance primitive. So we can vary the load uh, as well as the line input. On the output side, these three events, E1 through E3, strobe the measure value primitives, which in turn measure the output voltage under tip, min, and max conditions. Those are sent over the VMIF bus to the monitor, which stuffs them into a data packet, which is sent on up to the scoreboard for evaluation. Let's examine the event chain in more detail. The action starts at the left, where the driver command task triggers an event at the appropriate time. The corresponding monitor command task is awaiting that event. Uh, code in the fixture may also await events in order to strobe the appropriate measurement primitive. Uh, however, since a UVM event cannot be declared inside a submodule, we embedded a small class named Hopper and now the fixture where we set up the uh, event, the uh, event pool, as as the declarations here show, and we can then refer to any event by the short path name H dot E three, for example. We found that events provided a nice crisp mechanism for timing stimulus and response. They enabled us to. Uh, develop a detailed test from working from a hand-drawn timing diagram like the one on slide 9. This diagram depicts part of a longer RANTRANS test suite. This is the high-level test suite that randomly alternates between line transient and low transient tests. Even a DUT that passed all eight standalone directed tests might very well hit an unexpected corner case and fail this random sequence by displaying excessive undershoot or overshoot. This might reveal a slow feedback loop or other design flaw. There are various ways to develop a sequence like this in UVM. We chose the RAND sequence construct uh, and, and uh, as you can see here, the for loop is used to build up an associative array called order by appending line transient or low transient test types to the array that's done at the top level. That array, once built, is passed down to the driver and monitor for Rantrans. And... Uh, uh, that that gets around the random instability issue uh, uh, often encountered in system Verilog due to thread locality. This approach is impervious to code modifications or even changes in logic simulator. Slide 11 shows the results. Uh, on the left side, here's a RAND trans transcript for a particular seed, and we see one failure out of 10. Change the seed, run the same test, we get four failures out of 10. 
uh, here's one of them. It's uh, 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 an overshoot of uh, 278 millivolts, which easily exceeds the spec. So uh, we've demonstrated an analog-friendly UVM test bench that applies a wide assortment of low-level directed tests, as well as uh, uh, a high-level random order test suite to the, the regulator DUT. Um, and uh, the analog resources were provided by XModel's extensive library. Uh, for, for more information, please visit Scientific Analog's booth over in the exhibit hall. Thank you.